Horizon Forbidden West was already an amazing game when it came out, but now a little over 4 months after launch the game is in an even better state. Thanks to a host of big and small updates we've seen some great quality of life changes added and of course recently we got New Game Plus that came with a lot of new weapons as well. We'll be going through all the important changes that have been made to Forbidden West since launch so if you're excited for that then leaving a like on the video would really help the channel out. And let's go! By far the biggest feature that's been added since launch is of course New Game Plus. It's easily accessible after finishing the main story by interacting with the Far Zenith object in your home base. You can play through the whole game again revisiting main and side quests while also receiving the new Champions tokens that you can use to buy a selection of New Game Plus exclusive face paints, armor dies and most importantly some very powerful new legendary weapons. We've already made a video with a better overview of all the features of New Game Plus, so go give them on a watch if you haven't already. In that same update, two other huge new features were also introduced. One of these is the Ultra Hard difficulty, which is making its return from Zero Dawn. You have to select this extra challenging mode at the start of your game because playing on Ultra Hard means you cannot change the difficulty whatsoever. That is until you reach the end of the main quest and reset your playthrough with a New Game Plus or New Game Plus Plus save, where you can reselect the difficulty at the start again. Still though, no machine health bars and heavily increased enemy health and damage make this significantly more challenging than very hard. Plus, there's a new trophy added for completing the game on ultra hard from start to finish, as well as completing a New Game Plus playthrough and collecting all items associated with New Game Plus. The second big added feature is Transmog, which allows you to wear the look of any armor while using the stats of your favorite one. It works a bit different than other transmog systems you might be used to as instead of applying a visual to a specific armor you're basically selecting a single look you want to apply to Aloy. Which means that even if you switch your actual armor as long as you do not disable your current transmog your look will not change. But yeah, of course, great that we don't have to sacrifice style for stats any longer and with the transmog not costing you any materials at all, you can change it up as many times as you like. For extra bragging rights, you can now also grind for ghost levels, which means you can keep leveling after the cap of 50, although these new levels won't give you any skill points. This time they're actually displayed on your HUD and your save file now as well. If for some reason you want to make changes to your current build, you can easily refund all your skill points now for free in the skills menu. Keep in mind that doing this will refund all your skill points so if you do it while your skill tree is practically filled in you need to manually rebuy all your skills. So more useful if you're still filling out the skill tree as by the end of the game you'll have most skills already unlocked. Of course with all these big new features in the most recent update you might forget about some of the smaller quality of life changes that have been made since launch. Some of which are actually real game changers by themselves. Like the disable pickup animation option that was added which obviously lets you disable the little animation Aloy does when picking up herbs, rocks and rich wood. And with how many times you will be performing this action in the game, getting rid of the little crouch Aloy does will end up being a huge time saver in the long run. You can find this one under the general options. We've also seen a ton of improvements to the game's photo mode, most notably to the blurry outfits that plagued the game at launch when you would select a pose for Aloy. Visibility has also been increased in specific relic ruin and black box locations which makes getting them a lot less of a pain and over in your inventory you can now see what weaves you have equipped thanks to a checkmark icon next to them which again wasn't the case at launch. And there has also been a really nice change for crafting potions on the fly as Fiber Zest and Vigor Stem are now automatically sent to your stash upon collecting them. You need these resources to craft some of the higher end potions but before the update that fixed this you'd have to manually dump these into your stash if you wanted to collect more than your inventory would allow you to hold. Now if you find one of these materials while harvesting medicinal berries they'll go straight to your stash. And while the game already looked impressive from the start, the new game plus patch did really improve the image quality, most notably when it comes to shimmering effects that were present on foliage in the game. There's also some improvements to draw distance and pop in, if you're interested in the technical rundown Digital Foundry made a really good video on it which we'll link to in the video description. Overall though, no matter if you're playing in performance, resolution or the newly added balanced mode, the game should look even better than it did at launch. Because yes, a new graphics mode has also been added to the game. At launch you could of course pick between performance mode which focuses on delivering a stable 60 FPS and resolution which drops the game down to 30 but increases the image resolution. 
Patch 1.17 introduced the balance mode to the mix however, targeting 40 frames per second while also increasing the image quality. I personally think that 40 frames per second already feels much better to play than 30, but the 60 frames on performance mode is still the best way to experience Forbidden West, especially since support for VRR and HFR has been added which will allow for even higher frame rates if your TV or monitor supports it. We've also seen some changes to the spawn rates for Apex machines. Apex scroungers didn't spawn at first, so this was later fixed, and the spawn rate on Apex bristlebacks has also seen an increase since launch. And while we're still not able to find an Apex Grimhorn in the wild, their entries to the machine catalog are now auto-unlocked so you won't miss out on a trophy. Same deal with the game's final boss by the way, so no need to worry if you didn't scan them with your focus as after completing the story, the machine should be automatically added to your machine catalog. And for the real collectible hunters, a lot of collectibles that were strangely missing have been restored as well. Most recently, Data Point 63 near the Relic Ruin on the Isle of Spires. And of course, there's been some rebalancing going on for both Aloy's weapons and the Valor Surges, and surprisingly, it's actually the Valor Surges that have been hit the hardest. The Power Shots Valor Surge no longer refills your current ammo, which was a tactic you could use to create free ammo for resource hungry weapons like the spike thrower or sharp shot bows. Your shots still don't consume ammo but you no longer fill up your inventory of currently equipped ammo and you're also unable to fire if you have no ammo for a weapon even though your shots won't cost any extra ammo. Meanwhile the stealth stalker surge also received a huge nerf. First it would buff your outgoing damage by 200% if the target was unaware of Aloy. However, this was later changed to 50% for ranged attacks with a 200% damage buff remaining for silent strikes only. Which does significantly decrease the Valor Surge's power when combined with a Sharp Shield Bow for instance, and there's not a lot you can do with a 200% increase on melee damage. On the note of melee, a tactic you could use to quickly charge up a Resonator Blast on your spear by using the Quick Swap feature for your weapons has also been removed from the game. In the weapons department, it's mostly been a rebalancing of the upgrade levels for legendary weapons. While an earlier patch nerfed them pretty significantly, this was later changed to the system that Gorilla had actually intended. In the current state, most legendary weapons will only perform slightly better than purple ones, but since they're much more of a hassle to upgrade, you can still use upgraded purple gear to farm the components you need. When fully upgraded though, legendary weapons still outperform very rare weapons by a long shot and most of the newly added New Game Plus weapons are even stronger than the base game legendaries. The only weapons that have seen more changes are the Deathseeker Shadow, who received an extra overdraw perk at the cost of losing some crit chance, and the Wings of the Ten, which had its crit chance buff reduced from 15 to 8%. On top of that, Blast Slings in general have seen a nerf since launch as well as Spike Throwers, as both categories have seen their crit damage reduced, with Blast Slings receiving the bigger nerf of the two. What's more interesting to me is that the Trapper playstyle has also seen some significant nerfs since launch. I didn't feel like this playstyle was particularly powerful when compared to others, but we've seen two nerfs very specifically targeting traps. Advanced and Elite traps are now more expensive to craft if only by a bit, but more significantly is the nerf to the Resilient Trapper skill. Before, if you get 4 points in the skill with an armor weave, you were able to completely negate any damage from traps to yourself, which is of course great if you're placing traps mid-combat and a machine steps on them immediately. However, currently you can only get up to 85% damage reduction, which is still a lot, but it's not the same as being able to completely ignore all damage. And while most status effects are unchanged since launch, we did see a slight nerf to the shocked status, which has a bit of a shorter duration on medium and heavy machines. But even even in its nerfed state, it is still pretty useful. And a bit of a surprise, but smoke bombs were actually buffed on higher difficulties, as noted in our most recent update video. It used to be the case that you need two smoke bombs on very hard to disorient a machine, but with the cooldown on these smoke bombs, that made them rather useless. But this has since been patched and now any machine will instantly be affected by a smoke bomb even on higher difficulties. But yeah, overall the game is in a much better state than it was at launch and we know Gorilla isn't done yet either. There are of course substantial rumors and theories concerning DLC for the game, which we have no confirmation for as of yet. And there will of course be more updates and patches coming as well, with hopefully more awesome new features and quality of life changes. And of course, before we leave, let's go over some amazing screenshots from the community with our resident photo mode expert Joyce and pre-recorded Jordan as he's currently on a holiday. Your take it away. Yes, thanks Dennis. We recorded this before my break, but uh, let's go over some shots. Of course, you can send them our way 
identify the Horizon Raptor hashtag on Twitter or by going to the dedicated pictures channel in the Discord and you can find the Discord via a link in the video description. Joyce, you're of course here as well. Let's go over these awesome shots. Yes, hello, hello. First up, we've got Seeker Sanctuary over on Twitter where Aloy is swimming in between two snap moths and the creator of this screenshot took advantage of their lights wow. to take this awesome shadow shot. It's also a great phone wallpaper material Oh too. yeah. The second one is from Dusky L where Aloy is having fun while climbing over various obstacles. Love the Kratos face paint choice here, matching with the paint on her arms. This is me when uh, Ragnarok comes out. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> And my favorite is from Sushifu, another great phone wallpaper one where Aloy is touching the water and you can really see the ripple effect in there. Love the quality of the screen as well and some sun rays peeking out in the back. Very so cool. So Joyce, who's gonna win? Phone wallpaper. This one? <gasps> Ooh, that's, uh, that's so... I think okay, this you one, will yeah. hear it in the next video. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll keep the suspense. Subscribe, of course. And thanks for the support. And check out our previous video on the previous update by clicking on the screen. We'll speak to you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.